Hey there, this is Coach Troy from Tate Fitness, and today I wanted to talk about the human endocrine system and the important functions of the endocrine system, and pretty much everything in a simplistic version on how it you know, affects the human body and, and what it does and what its job is to do. Now, the endocrine system is a collection of cells and glands that release and produce hormones. Now, these hormones are chemicals that have their effect in different areas and distant parts of the human body. It's a communication network similar to the sympathetic nervous system that controls and regulates different, different hormones in the human body at different times. It basically controls every physiological activity in the human body. But the nervous system is very direct, like very instant. It goes from one neuron to another instantaneously, like in a millisecond, okay? Now the difference with the endocrine system, it's very slow. The chemical reactions can take minutes to hours to days, if not weeks. While the nervous system, like I said, is instantaneous. It's boom, boom, boom. There's like zero hesitation. When the hypothalamus is actually the control center or the regulator, the master regulator of all these chemical reactions in the human body, right? So when the hypothalamus actually basically controls the nervous system, it's a sympathetic nervous system along with the endocrine system. So when it's doing a nervous signal through neurons or neurotransmitters, it's boom, 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 okay? The endocrine system tells the hypothalamus to signal the anterior pituitary, which I'm gonna get to here in a second when I talk about the hypothalamus. But it signals to the anterior pituitary release a hormone that releases another hormone and so on. They're called cascading effects and they can take even a week sometimes for its function to exist according to its half-life on how long that function you know basically entails itself to do its final job but now we'll go on to the main part of this endocrine system that i believe it's important is the hypothalamus which sits below the thalamus that's why they call it the hypothalamus the hypothalamus again like i said is the master regulator the control center okay the hypothalamus basically Shown right over here. I know it's kind of far away from, from this uh, drawing that I did of the endocrine system, but the hypothalamus basically releases hormones through two lobes. You got the anterior and posterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland is signaled by a blood supply. That blood supply is called the hypothecial portal system. So it goes to the hypothecial portal system through a blood supply to signal to the anterior pituitary to release its set of hormones. Not the anterior, but the opposite is released by a nervous signal. So it just sends a nervous signal down to release its set of hormones for it to operate, if that makes any sense. So nervous signal for the um, posterior and a blood supply for the anterior pituitary gland. So there's five main distinctive hormones that's released by the hypothalamus. So the first um, hormone that's being released. And I'm just going to go, this is like not, not in order. I'm just kind of putting it out there. It doesn't like release in this order either. I'm just doing it for the video here and to explain to you guys what the hypothalamus does. So the first hormone I'm going to talk about is a thyrotropin releasing hormone. So thyrotropin releasing hormone from the hypothalamus is going to release down the anterior pituitary to the hypothecal portal system to release through the anterior pituitary through the hypothecal portal system to release thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, thyroid stimulating hormone is what's going to release to your thyroid, which is your thyroid gland sits on your trachea, which is over here by your throat, to release thyroxine, which is T4, and triiodothyronine, which is T3. The T3 is the most active thyroid in the human body because most of your T4 is converted over T3. It's like an 80, 20% ratio when you talk about that. So anyways, through your thyroid gland, is what's where it treats is thyroid releasing, thyroid releasing hormone or thyroid simulating hormone. I should say thyroid releasing hormone in the hypothalamus, thyroid simulating hormone through the anterior pituitary for T3 and T4. There's a little faster version right there. Okay, so the second hormone I'm gonna talk about is gonna be Corticotropin releasing hormone. Now, corticotropin releasing hormones released from the hypothalamus down through the hypothecal portal system to the anterior pituitary to release adrenocorticotropic hormone. 
adrenal cortical tropic hormone now is signaled to the cortex, the outside of the adrenal glands, which the adrenal glands sit on top of the kidneys. That has to do with your adrenals, okay? People talk about adrenal support and adrenal fatigue, and that's like a, another discussion, but the outside of your adrenal glands is what is stimulated when adrenal corticotropin releasing hormones release for adrenal corticotropic hormone, okay? So adrenal corticotropic hormone again is released to the anterior pituitary, and then it's stimulating the out cortex of the adrenal glands to release three different things, or three main things, okay? There's more than three, but the first cascading effect is aldosterone, which has to do with sodium or the releasing of water and sodium in that sense. Uh, the second thing would be cortisol, which cortisol then is converted into different things like uh, releasing of cortisol and blood sugar and raising blood pressure. Well, aldosterone does that as well, okay? And another thing would be hormones or androgens. And one of those androgens have to be DHEA or dihydroepiandrosterone. Those things release. Now the stimulus for adrenal corticotropic hormone from the anterior pituitary is basically be through stress. Stress raises a red flag to your adrenal glands to make all these cascading effects happen and so on and so on. Okay, so next on the list, we're gonna go to growth hormone releasing hormone. So growth hormone releasing hormone when the body's needing it. Now the stimulus for growth hormone would be being hungry, um, Gremlin levels being high in the morning due to high insulin sensitivity levels can release GH or growth hormone through the hypothalamus, through the anterior pituitary, from the hypostyle portal system to the anterior pituitary to release growth hormone. Growth hormone stimulates growth. You know, that's pretty simple, right? Growth hormone releasing growth kind of makes sense. So in that aspect, growth has to do with growth and development of the body, your bones, and so on. Again, I can go on a lot deeper than that but this will be like a 10 hour video if I discuss everything in crazy detail. So that's not what I'm trying to do here. Next on the list would be prolactin, okay? So prolactin, prolactin releasing hormones released from the hypothalamus signal down to the anterior pituitary to release prolactin. Prolactin is prolactation, that's what they say prolactin. So when you lactate, okay? Um, High indicative levels of prolactin can be induced by exogenous hormones like nondrolone or 19 nors. They release more prolactin, therefore guys get gynecomastia. But that's for talking about PEDs and a whole nother topic on not endocrinology, which I'm trying to do right here with the endocrine system. That's more pharmacology. But pharmacology, exogenous hormones, big time affects the endocrine system, which in my mind, people should study the endocrine system first and their own human endocrinology, figure out what their blood work is before adding anything exogenous to see even if you need it, for example. But again, another topic. I'm kind of rambling on here. Next on the list would be gonadotropin-releasing hormones. I think I didn't get to that yet. So like we got through thyroid-simulating hormone or thyrotropin-releasing hormone, corticotropin-releasing hormone, prolactin-releasing hormone, Growth hormone releasing hormones. The fifth thing would be gonadotropin releasing hormones. So when the hypothalamus stimulates the gonadotropin releasing hormones released, sent down to the anterior pituitary, to the hypothesal portal system to the anterior pituitary to release gonadotropins. The two gonadotropins, which are through your gonads or your testes or, or your uterus, if you're a female, would be luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone. Now, LH and FSH are big for fertilization, for semen or sperm or latent gags for, for, for the men, uh, also for men, testosterone, um, for women, to, for fertilization. So follicle stimulating hormone or basically follicles that are being stimulated. LH for women, luteinizing hormones when the egg's actually being pushed out. That's what luteinizing hormone means for estrogen and progesterone. Like I said, and for men, it's more like testosterone or sperm for spermogenesis to obviously use to impregnate somebody, right? For procreation. Again, that's a whole nother thing. Um, those are basically the five hormones that I wanted to discuss here today through the anterior pituitary from the hypothalamus. So if you guys have any questions, I can go in much, much deeper into this. 
um, I'm just kind of scraping the top of the five basic hormones that's being released. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching this video and take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.